no matter how bad it looks. What's up, brother? We're going to go ahead and take the offering this morning. So we'll open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to be here today, Lord. Together with our brothers and sisters here, Heavenly Father, on a Sunday morning, just to give, just to hear your word, Heavenly Father, to praise you, to glorify you, and to thank you, Heavenly Father, for your faithfulness, your mercy, your grace, Lord, that, that you give us that we don't deserve, but you give us because you love us, Father. So we pray today, Lord, that you would bless this offering, Lord, that you would allow it to multiply for your kingdom, Lord, and we just give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can you guys hear me loud and clear? Amen. Uh, sometimes they tell me I got a problem to speak too low and they can't hear me in the back, so I'm glad I got this microphone this morning. Let me take a moment, man. I just need to, I need to, to just take a look out here and just and give God thanks. On the way here, I was driving by myself and uh, I teared up a little, broke a little. The Lord was speaking to me and just, he's faithful. He's faithful. 25 plus years ago, I gave my life to the Lord. I got saved as a teenager. And I went to a conference, and in that conference, I had somebody tell me that God called me to preach the word. You know, it took me 25 plus years, but he's got me up here preaching the word. Man, it's crazy, huh? It just goes to show you that God's plan never changes for you. You know, it's up to you whether or not you're going to run in it and walk in it, or you're going to run from it or walk away from it. It took me 25 plus years to start walking in it. And I just thank God that he never gave up on me. It's amazing how God speaks to you at times. You know, um, this word, when I put this sermon together, it was, it was uh, almost about a year ago. And I got to share it once, but, and Pastor just, he told me, man, that word was... That word was something else, man. He says, you need, to, you need to preach that one day on a Sunday service. Man, I got the opportunity to preach it on a Sunday service. So, it's weird how God talks to us. It's not weird. It's just amazing how God talks to us. The little things in life. The simple things. I got this word because I work out in the country. And during the lunch break, I get in the lunch break and, you know, for about an hour I can pull off and go under this tree and park under this tree. It's a nice shady tree. Beautiful. Anyways, one day a storm came through. We had a big storm. It, it knocked out about 100 power poles on the north side of over there by the Salton Sea. Power poles and so not realizing I went and I got my lunch and I'm going to do my regular thing. Got there and my tree was gone. It snapped right at the bottom of the, of the limb. It just snapped right in half. And I was like, wow. I'm not thinking everything. I want to find another tree, right? Well, a couple months had gone by, and I drove right by that tree, and I looked at it, and out of that tree, it's right, it runs right down by, right next to the new river. And right by that tree, I looked at it, and the stump started growing new stems. Just started green stuff was growing out of it. And I said, it's amazing how God speaks to you because he spoke to me at that moment, and he was like, Man, can you imagine how strong the roots of that tree are? Amen. A storm came through, knocked it over, but look, it's, it's growing back. Amen. So I went home and I just started researching. And, and this story right here, I'm going to share a story about me and my wife. We want, we want to go to Yosemite and Sequoia. That's, that's one, of her, one of her bucket lists she wants to go to. You know, she loves to go out to nature. She loves to hike. We just don't get to do it a lot, but I promised her I'm going to take her one day. And, and this story is about General Sherman. I don't know if you guys have all heard about General Sherman. He's a sequoia tree in Sequoia National Park. See, General Sherman, he's, a, he's a, 
275 feet tall. Its diameter is said to be 36 feet wide, just on the base of the tree. And it weighs over 4,000 pounds. Can you imagine how big this tree is? It's estimated to be, it's estimated to be between 23 to 2,700 years old. To this day, the tree continues to grow. They say it grows enough wood to make trees that would be 60 foot tall next to it. That's how much wood it grows. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm giving you a lesson on a sequoia tree. And the reason is because in order for a tree to grow this size and be this old, imagine 2,300 years old. Can you imagine the elements, the storms, you know, the different, the different things of nature that this tree had to go up against just to be able to continue to flourish? You know, the strong winds, the storms, earthquake, flooding, snowstorms, whatever it was, it went through it all. Every different element, different seasons. You see, we're just like that tree. We go through different seasons. We may have seasons where we're, we're struggling with things. We're questioning whether, you know, if this is what God's calling is for us or if we're walking in God's will. We're questioning whether or not, you know, if we're doing the right things, making the right choices, or we have the right people in our lives, whatever it is, we're questioning things. Then we have the seasons where, man, everything is going just great. It feels like the prayers are being answered. We're seeing, we're seeing because of our faithfulness and our obedience, we're, we're starting to see, the, you know, God's blessings and the, the floodgates are opening. Those are the great seasons. See, we're going to have good, we're going to have bad. Those are going to be the seasons that we have, but... In those seasons, we have to learn that we got to praise God even when the season is bad. And we got to praise him even when it's good. See, because we can get content and we can get um, complacent when things are going good and we can forget to give God thanks. We can forget, you know, it, it just becomes so easy and then it becomes a routine and then all of a sudden we don't even realize that because everything is going so good, you know, we we've, we've, haven't been reading our Bible as much. We haven't been praying as much. Guess what storm's coming next? Are you prepared for it? I've been through a lot of these seasons. Ups and downs, I've been through it all. You see, in God's Word, He tells us there are going to be different seasons. There's a season for everything. There's a timing for everything. In Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, if you have your Bible, you can go ahead and turn there. And if you get there, go ahead and give me an amen. I need to hear an amen. That way I know that you guys are got there. If I don't get an amen, I know that you guys aren't there yet. You got an amen? That'll be. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, it tells us a time for everything. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to, time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. See, God said there's a time for everything. A time for everything. We may not understand God's timing, but it's not our place to try to figure that out. It's our, it's our place to have faith and know that God's timing is what's best for us. See, what, but what, the one thing about all this is these seasons and this timing, the one thing that they all have that is the same is God is part of every, all of it. Amen. He's part of the season you're going through. He's part of the timing. It's his timing, not ours. See, God knows what's good for us. See, sometimes we can think that 
we, we, we can try to do God's job for him. We can think that, look, this is what I want. But guess what? That might not be the time that God wants you to have that. You know? Some of you, somebody may have a relationship that they're going through. Maybe it's not the time that God needs you for. Maybe you're not ready for it at that time. It doesn't mean that God's not going to give it to you, but maybe he needs to build you up into something, you know, make you stronger, make your faith stronger, you know. The foundation needs to be built on, 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 on God's word. You need to put God first. And then when all that comes in the order, hey, guess what? Then you'll be ready for it. There's a timing for everything. We need to trust God's timing. Trust me, if we try to go out and step out on our own, we're just going to make it a lot worse. Like I said, God knows why we're going through what we're going through. He knows why we need to go through it. Let's just trust in it, have faith in it, and lean on it to know that at the end of it, if we trust in God in it, then it's going to be exactly what we anticipated. And to be honest, let's be honest with ourselves. We couldn't understand it even if we tried. See, in, God's, in Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 9, it tells us, God's word tells us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So there's nothing we could ever do to imagine or be on the same thought level as God. There's nothing we could ever do. We're, we're, we're just not that smart, you know? And his way is always what's best for our way. His way always works out what's best for us. He says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. See, I think that's where the world struggles so much. It struggles to grab a hold of God's word and struggle and, 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 and just... And walk in it. They don't understand why some things happen, why some things, why bad things happen, or, or why, we, why, we, why good things happen to bad people, or why bad things happen to good people. We, we'll never understand that. We'll never be able to dissect that question because we'll never be able to understand what God's plan is for us. There's a reason why we had to go through that. You know, it hurts to lose somebody. We know that, right? Amen. Amen. You know, but sometimes in losing somebody, your eyes are open to, to, to what God wants for you. You know, sometimes some people it'll draw close, far away, but some people it'll draw closer to God. You know? Just because it feels good, looks good, and tastes good doesn't always mean it's good for us. Let me say that again. Just because it feels good, looks good, and tastes good doesn't mean it's always good for us. Because amen, amen, amen. we all do know the enemy and the world, they will bless you and it will and, and it'll make it look just like God did. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. He knows how to make it look. Guess what? How do we know if this blessing was from God. This is how we know. Did that blessing come along and did it draw you closer to God? Or did that blessing come along and it separate you from God? Amen. Amen. We're no longer doing the things that God has called us to do. You know, our church attendance is down. You know, we, we, we got a brand new desert toy or we're Whatever it is we may be. We may have got a new quad or whatever it may have been. Or, or, or God may have blessed us with a new trailer. And we're just thanking God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know what I prayed for and you gave it to me. Guess what? Now, your church, now you're not attending church as much because you're taking a lot of trips. Huh? Now you're not going to as many church functions because you're out in the desert. And don't get me wrong. It's good. God's going to bless you with these things. But he's not going to bless you with something that is going to separate you from him. Amen. If that's what's happening, guess what? I'm, I'm here to tell you that blessing didn't come from God. 
Whatever God gives us, he wants us to draw closer to him. So it's time that we really look at those things. Be careful what we're praying for. You know, Lord, if you're going to bless me with this, let me, let, it, let me bring you closer. Let my relationship be closer with you. You know, our foundation shouldn't get weaker. It should become stronger. That's why it's important. It's very important that in our walk and through all this that we surround ourselves with people also who are kingdom minded just like we are. In Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Be encouraging to one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And let us consider how we may spur one another. Look, it's our jobs as brothers and sisters in Christ if we see one of, our brother, one of our brothers and sisters in Christ start to take that wrong path, you know, that blessing came along and now you're no longer seeing them. They're not here. It's our job, hey, to reach out. Amen. Hey, man, I ain't seen you in church. Hey, I ain't seen you at Bible study. Hey, I, you know, where you been? It's our job to come alongside one another. Are we doing that? I know I keep messing with my ear thing, but I'm not used to these things right here, so <laughs> work with me. You know, are we coming along? Are we coming beside, alongside each other? See, we're called to do that. We were, ne we were never meant to go to run this race alone. Never meant to run this race alone. So if we see a brother or sister struggling, we see a brother or sister going through it, Come alongside them. And the reason, I'm, the reason I say this is you're gonna, we're going to go back to General Sherman and, and you're going to see the amazing thing that happens with these sequoia trees. Check this out. You would figure a tree this big, you know, that the roots would go deep down into the ground, right? They would, a tree that's 275 feet tall, can you imagine how big those roots needed to be? to hold this tree up to withstand the storms that come through, you know, the winds that come through. They got to be humongous and they got to be deep down. But check this out. This is what amazed me about this word right here. It was these roots grow about six feet deep, six to ten feet deep. That's not very deep for a tree that's 275 feet tall. So you figure if wind came through, it would easily knock this tree over, Right? But check this out. This is what amazed me about this tree. Is they go out. The roots, they go outwards. And the tree next to it, its roots are going outwards. And the tree next to it, his roots are going outwards. They wrap around each other. They mend together. And they help hold each other up. Isn't that what we're called to do as a church? We're called to do the same thing as a church. My brother's struggling, I'm going to help him up. My sister's struggling, I'm going to help her up. These roots, that's how they get their strength. And we're called as the body of Christ to do the same thing for one another. Are we doing it? It's, it's, easy, it's easy to get focused on what's going on with us and not worry about what's going on with anybody else. That's easy. To, it, it's easy to ha it, it, it'll happen really easy. See, but we're not called to do that. We're called to lift each other up, to pray for each other, to go to, go to battle for each other. You know? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, in the body of Christ, we all have a job to do. We're all called to do, every, every one of those trees has a job to do, you know? And, and if one tree isn't doing its job, guess what? It's going to be a domino effect. This tree's going to fall, then this tree's going to fall, and then this tree's going to fall. And the same thing comes with the body of Christ. 
if we're not doing our part or you're not doing our part, guess what? We might lose a brother or sister. And then we might lose another one. And then we might lose another one. And guess what? We might have a whole bunch of empty chairs one time. You know? Pastor could be up here preaching. Now it might just be Sister Stacy and maybe two people if we're not careful. To be honest with you, I look out into I, I look out into here and I know it's summertime. I know it is. But I see the empty chairs. And if that doesn't hurt our hearts, like I said the other day, man, I, there was some empty chairs at church on Wednesday, and it's like the enemy won that battle today. In that person's life, the enemy won that battle today. They were either too busy to be here. If they were sick and they couldn't be here, you know, let's pray for them because maybe there was a reason. But if the reason they weren't here is because they were too busy to be here or they just couldn't get up out of bed to be here or they're just, they use the excuse that their life is too busy. We got to be careful. We got to be careful. We need to pray for those brothers and sisters and hope that they find their way back here. I look forward to a church where every chair is filled. I shared a word also the other day where it was like, if we're doing what we're called to do as the body of Christ, the power that we can walk in as a church, man, the lives that can be changed, the souls that can be saved, the miracles that can be done, Jesus says we're here to, we're, we can do great, we're here to do greater things than him. How can we do greater things in Christ if we don't even go to church? That was free, I'm sorry. That just took, took me off to the whole wrong path. But we'll, we'll go back to General Sherman, all right? That's another, hopefully that's another sermon for down the road. God calls us to do the same for the body of Christ. Every church has moving parts. Every one of us is called to do something in the body of Christ. Every one of us is called to do a job here for Turning Point. If this is your home church, you're called to do something for Turning Point. Amen, amen. God has called you to do something. Some of you, God has called you to do something, and guess what? You haven't stepped out into it because you're either you're scared or you might, you know, you got that fear of failing. That was me in the beginning. When, when God said, you didn't get up there, you're going to preach your word. What? I knew the calling, but that didn't take the fear away. Now I get up here and it's like, my wife, I think, was more nervous for, for, was more nervous for me than I was for myself. You know? It, it, but guess what? I mean, that just... It's okay to be, we have to remember, fear doesn't come from God. The the spirit of fear is not of God, right? That doesn't mean that we're not going to deal with it, but we got to walk through that fear. Trust God, have faith in God, and know that he called you to do something, and he's not going to give you something you can't handle. Right? He's not going to give you something you can't handle. So if God has called you to do something for the church, it could be children's ministry, it could be street ministry, it could be feeding the, you know, uh, feeding the homeless, you know, fundraising, greeting, uh, whatever it may be. We've all been called to do something for the body of Christ. I, trust me, I know, it can get, we can get comfortable just you know, sitting there at the same chair and just being here on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and a Sunday, and then going about our business, you know, the rest of the week. No, God has called us as a church. Like I said, can you imagine the power that we we could walk in if we were just all obedient, faithful, and did the things God called us to do, especially as a church? How many lives? Look at those family members that we're praying for. Those lost family members that we're praying for. Man, they could be sitting right next to you on a church, on a Sunday service. 
Hey, but what do we do? Be faithful. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27, it reads, Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all, but all its many parts form one body. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot says, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the, whole, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts are of the body that seem to be weaker or indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the part that the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor of the parts that it lacked, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Equal concern for each other. That's, that, that's, that's what just jumped out at me right now. Equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, what does that say? Every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Wow. Right there. Said it all. You are all the body of Christ. My calling might be different from Brother Brendan's. Brother Brendan's might be different from Brother Louis. Everybody's got a different calling when it comes to the kingdom of God. God has a, has a, a different job for each of us. I'm pre I may be preaching the word up here, you know, and Sister Loris was greeting in the front. Does that mean that my calling was better than Sister's? No, because we were both doing what God had called us to do, and, and in that, we were both doing it to glorify God. So don't think that something so small here in our church compared to something like pastor job is, is, is you know, as, as pastor being the pastor of our church, is greater in, in God's eyes. If you're both doing it to glorify God, that's all God sees. He, he doesn't measure what your calling is compared to what sister's calling may be, as long as we're doing it all to glorify God, then guess what? It evens itself out. Every part of the body has an important role. Not one is greater than the other. Everyone in this church and out there on Facebook land have an important role. Just like those roots play an important role for those trees to stand strong and firm, we also have an important role when it comes to the body of Christ. It's up to us to seek God, and he will let us know what that role is. If you don't know what your role is in this church, if you don't know what your role is, you don't know what God's calling you to do, pray about it. Seek God about it. And if and truly in your heart, you want to do something for the kingdom of God, he will tell you and he will put you where he wants you to be. 
a door will be open. And when that door is open, take that opportunity to do it. Take that opportunity to do it. Because guess what? When you walk into that, then guess what? He might open another door for you. And then when you complete that, he might open another door for you. It's called growth. Right? We're called to grow. Every day in our relationship with God, and no matter what it is, whatever we're called to do, we're called to grow, to flourish. That's why we were created, no? To flourish. He didn't call us to be stagnant, to be complacent, to be lazy. That's not why, that's not why he created us. And remember, whatever you do, do it to glorify God. That's, the, that's our only objective is everything that we do, we glorify God in. It's the simple things, the little things. Like I said, if it's greeting somebody, if it's preaching God's words, if it's taking in the offer, glorify God in it. In Colossians 3.17 it says, and whatever you do, whatever you do, whether, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter, like I just said. From the little thing at church to whatever it may be. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever you're called to do, it could be, like I said earlier, children's ministry. Sound tech in the back. Maybe take Nick's job. They might, God might have something different for Nick to do. You know? You never know. It's not our, it, it, God will let us know what he wants us to do. In 1 Corinthians 10.31 it says, Here, here's another one in whatever you do. So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. The little thing. Eat. Drink. That's, let's be honest with each other. I'm guilty of it. How many times do we sit down to eat at the dinner table or the lunch table and we, we forget to say grace? That's a little thing. We got to give God glory in that also. Right? He put that food on the table. He put that money in our pocket so we could pay for that food on the table. So why are we giving thanks to God when that food's on the table? I know I need to be better than that. Like I said, I'm guilty of that also. I instill it for a while and then it kind of... I'm going to pray about that and have God you know, open my eyes when I, when I, when I forget to do it. Because for, it's so simple to forget to do things like that. Wake up in the morning, get up out of bed. What's the first thing that we should do? Thank you, Jesus, for waking me up this morning. But it's simple to get up out of bed, get ready for work, walk out the door, and just go about your day. I've learned and I've, I've gotten to a routine that no. Man, I set my alarm. I have to be, a, I set my alarm an hour before, an hour early just so I get that time in with God. I know we all love our sleep. Who doesn't? But God loves spending time with you. Do you love spending time with God? See, that's got to be, God's got to be our first love. He's got to be what we wake up to in the morning. He's got to be what we go to sleep at, to at night. Is that where we have God in our hearts? We've got to make sure that See, it's the simple things. It's the little simple things. Getting up and going to work. Thank you, Lord. You know, I'm so thankful now that, that even at work, God is using me to do the little things. You know? And I, and I thank you for those opportunities every day. A little story I get to share the other day. I, I shared it on Facebook because it was like, 
I just wanted to give God the glory and the opportunity that he used me to help somebody. See, it's not about me. It's about what God used me to do. See, I gave God the glory in that. And I shared it because 118 degrees that day. I passed by and there's a guy on the side of the road. It looks like he's stuck in the sand. You know, and I could have just kept on driving. And I did, to be honest with you, the first time. I'm not going to lie to you. I did. But as I got to the end of the ditch bank, God said, you know I asked you to turn around. <laughs> yes, I know. Flip the U-turn. He was half in the sand, half on the road. 118 degrees in the middle of the day. It was like 3 o'clock. And I said, hey, are you good? You, you, you stuck? Can I pull you out? He's like, I got a flat. He had a car full of different things, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to pull behind you. I'm going to, I'll help you. So I just need you to get the car off the, t to the road. So he, he did it. I got out, got my jack, took his tire off, changed his tire for him. And as I get done doing that, he pulls money out of his pocket. And he tells me, here, man, this is all I have. I said, I can't take that. He's like, no, take it. Please take it. I can't take that. See, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And when God tells me to do something, I have to do it. Yes. Amen. He looked at me, and this is the exact words. I've never met anybody like you. I said, no, look, at you're just experiencing the love of Jesus Christ is what you're experiencing. Know that he loves you and I love you. I said, just go ahead and get home, man, get safe. He called his wife and said, never mind, you don't have to come and get me. See, it's those little things that we glorify God in. I could have easily boasted and said, oh, I did it. No, no, God used me to do it. See, when we're walking in that calling and we're doing what we're supposed to do as the body of Christ, those things become easy. Those, those things become everyday things to us, the little things. Are we coming alongside one another? Are we, are we lifting each other up? Are we helping each other? That's what we're called to do. So I thank, I thank the Lord for that. That day I glorified him. Seek God in all things. Stay rooted in God's word. Stay rooted in your prayer. And importantly, stay rooted in church. Ask God to help you find where he can plant. Look, if you're here visiting today and this is not your church, ask God to, to plant you somewhere. He'll put you somewhere. You know, somewhere where you just walk in and you feel like it's home. That's what happened with me and my wife. We came here, it's been what, three, four years now? Man, and it just felt like home. You know, he'll, he'll find a place to put you. There's a church, if you're, if you're visiting, but if this is your home, man, stay rooted in it. Amen. Don't hesitate. Go ask Sister Stacy or Pastor Norman who, you know, hey, what can I do? Get rooted, surround yourself with God-loving and God-fearing people. Amen. That's an important thing. That's one of the most important things is surrounding yourself with God-loving, God-fearing, kingdom-minded people. If I'm being led by the Holy Spirit daily, what good is it going to do for me to hang out with a group of people that don't have a relationship with Christ? It's not going to do me any good. But if I'm, if I'm if I'm God-fearing and I'm filled with the Spirit and I'm constantly walked by the Spirit, it's going to do me really good to walk with somebody who was also led by the same Spirit. We're going to be able to lift each other up. You know? In Proverbs 13, 20, it says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Simple. Walk with the wise and become wise. If you walk by the Spirit, we get our wisdom from who? The Holy Spirit, no? Amen. So make sure that you're walking 
with people who are spirit-filled. That's important. It's not going to do me any good to be filled with the spirit and me have a problem with alcohol and then go to a bar and hang out with my friends at the bar. What's going to happen? I'm probably going to end up drinking a beer, no? It's no, it does no good for an addict who's trying to kick drugs to go and kick it and hang out at the dope house. What's going to happen? Probably going to end up using. If I'm trying to walk this righteous path, I'm trying to walk the path that God set for me, I want people to come aside me who are kingdom-minded, who are led by the Spirit, and can help me lift me up on my days that I'm struggling, because we're going to struggle. Just because I serve God and I serve the Lord and I'm led by the Holy Spirit doesn't mean I'm not going to struggle. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to battle the same demons that were there. They're, they're going to show up. But if, man, if, if I'm rooted in the church, if I'm, if I'm praying, if I'm reading, if I'm, you know, seeking God every day, if I'm surrounding my people, my, myself with kingdom-minded people, it's going to be a little bit simpler. Amen. Amen. Ask yourself, who are you surrounding yourself with today? It's important. It's important. If you start your morning, man, you ask the Lord, Lord, guard my heart, guard my mind, and put me in a position where, hey, man, you know, that I, I, I don't have to struggle in that area because there's going to be, I'm, I'm blessed at work because there's a buddy, there's a, a guy that, that I can sit with now. He works in the office and he just, uh, he's kingdom minded. And I sit there and I talk to him in the morning now, but it's good to be able to talk with somebody who also is kingdom minded who's led by the Spirit. So we talk, and then I can... Have, I don't have to be in the back. I don't have to be in the conversations that I don't need to be in anymore. Because it's easy, man. It's really easy to sit around a group of people, and they're conversating, and you know it ain't right to get caught up in that. It's who you surround yourself with. See, we receive our wisdom from the Holy Spirit. So surround yourself with people who are led by the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, he tells us, do not be yoked together with any unbelievers. That's simple to understand, no? Do not be yoked with, together with unbelievers. For what do righteous and wicked have in common? Nothing. Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Absolutely nothing. It's you, 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 you understand once you once you've given your life to Christ, and then God has gifted you with the Holy Spirit. It's amazing how your eyes are opened. Right? Your eyes are opened. See, they were shut before you accepted Christ. So the things that you were doing that didn't look like they harmed you or you didn't think were bad for you or didn't, you didn't think they were going to affect you, those simple things, your eyes were not open to it. You didn't understand it. See, but when, we're, when we accept Christ and we're gifted with the Holy Spirit, our eyes are opened. Amen. Amen. Now we understand that those things that we did, they weren't good for us. The things that I was doing, maybe I thought just affected me, didn't realize that it affected my wife, it affected my children, it affected my loved ones. See, but we were, we were blind to that. We didn't see that. See, we, our eyes weren't open to that. Amen. See, we get our wisdom from the Holy Spirit, right? So if I'm led by the Spirit and my eyes are open to the things that I shouldn't be doing, but yet I'm yoking myself with unbelievers, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to... They're gonna, they're going to give me a hard time every time, right? They're going to make you feel like, like, oh, you think you're better than me. No, I don't think I'm better than you. Amen. See, we have to make sure that we yoke ourselves with believers, not unbelievers. And if you've got people in your family that are unbelievers, pray for them. 
Pray that God, that, that one day they just open their eyes, that they accept Christ in their hearts and that their eyes are open and then they can just see. Man, you are right. I shouldn't have been doing that. You know, I, I, I step back sometimes and I'm not judging nobody because it's not my place to judge, but I look at people who, who, who uh, struggle with alcohol because that, that was my thing. I like to drink. So, but I, I take a look back and I see, I'm like, man, that was me. You know, the decisions that I made, I embarrassed my wife like that. I let my kids see me like that. I set that example for them. And they were, my son was old enough to understand and, and understand. And so it was all new to him when I gave myself to Christ. That's not my dad. He's different. Right? So how could I blame him for struggling with that? That's my fault. I did that. Right? So when, when, when I got to stand before God and, and I have to answer for that. Man, think about it. Think about it. I thank the Lord he opened my eyes because now I see like, man. Time went by pretty fast, huh? So I close this morning. I'm going to go ahead and close this morning and we'll have one more scripture. But as we leave here today, let's ask God, you know, if we're doing our part. If we're being like the roots of that sequoia tree, are we doing our part? as the body of Christ? Are we holding each other up? Are we holding each other accountable? See, we're called to hold each other accountable too, though, right? It's not that I want to be in your business. It's not that, that you know, and I know sometimes we can feel like, man, they just want to be, no, it's not that I want to be in your business. It's because I love you. Amen. And I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to stumble. So we're called to come alongside one another and pray for one another and go to battle for one another. See, in, Eph in Ephesians 6.12, and this is the last scripture for the morning, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We're called to go to battle because, look, even though we don't know that our brother and sister is struggling, we have to understand that it's not just a physical battle. That Maybe on the outside, they, they, don't, they look fine and dandy. Maybe on the outside, they're walking around saying, I'm blessed. I'm good. I don't need help. I'm straight. But spiritually, they're struggling. Spiritually, they're, they're, their bones are dry. See, just because we can't see it doesn't mean that there's not a battle going on. He tells us there's a, it's a spiritual battle. So if you're struggling to get to church or you're struggling to, 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 to get involved in the church, man, there's a spiritual... He's doing whatever he needs to do to, to discourage you. He's doing whatever he needs to do to, to make you not be here. Spiritually, you're going, there's a battle going on for your soul right now. Spirit, there's a battle going on every day for our souls, all, all day, every day. Amen. The enemy doesn't take a day off. That's right. He's going at us seven days a week, every hour of the day, every minute of the day, every second of the day he's going at us. So should we as believers and us as the body of Christ take a day off? No. So... If you see your brother or your sister struggling, man, come up beside them. Come up beside them and pray for them. We're just like those Sequoia trees. are supposed to stay rooted, stay together as a church. If we can do that, can you imagine the power that we walk in? The authority that God, give, God has given us, that Jesus has given us. So much authority. Amen. So as we close today, first, I appreciate the opportunity to come up here and just share today's word with you. I hope that it spoke to somebody. Amen, 
Because I know that if somebody leaves here a little bit different, then God did his job, right? God's job was done. Man, it was a blessing to be up here. Like I said, man, it was just, if you pray for it and you sincerely want it, God will, God will, man, I thank God for this. So as we close and say goodbye to everybody in Facebook, um, we are going to open up the, uh, the, the altars here. If anybody wants prayer, Brother Louie, can you help me out? So thank you again, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity.